All right. Uh, welcome, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group uh, with the end of day market recap and um, really, really tight range today for the markets for equities. We traded in basically <clears throat> between IWM, QQ, uh, the Qs and small caps all traded plus or minus and I guess diamonds if you want to throw them in, all traded in a, in a plus to minus 15 uh, to 20 base of basis point range between how they finished and also how they traded on the day. You can see um, the 10 basis points that uh, S&P is up is, is actually a little bit of um, a move here after hours. We really didn't move that far today. And it just, um, you know, I can kind of drone on about this for a, for a while, but we just didn't want to uh, break out. And the valuary studies just really kind of told us that today uh, in several different um, indices as uh, <clears throat> as well as um, individual names. Um, so, well, you know, what does that mean when, when we kind of um, are just ve in a very choppy market? It just means that the opportunities are, are it's harder to find trending stocks. They're still out there. Uh, we caught a couple in the trading room today, but um, the, the opportunities are few and far between versus when we have a nice trending day. And, uh, you know, we haven't really had that in, in a little while. Uh, tomorrow's Wednesday, so maybe that turns around a little bit. You know, these markets can only stay exactly kind of flat or, or very, very low volatility. Usually we get one day of the week. Maybe it's tomorrow. Um, I did like the, the performance. So again, you know, looking at IWM, for example, you know, we, we, we did the same thing as what we did yesterday. Luckily, we didn't break down. Here's what we did yesterday. We hit that top of value um, and then broke to the bottom. And uh, that was pretty rough for small caps. Today, right around the open, we hit the top of value and just said, hey, we, we don't want to break out here. So the major ind indices, just I guess there's just not a lot of buying, not a lot of money that's being put to work in them right now. So you just have to be um, really, really picky um, when you have days like this. Apple, this was a good one, um, you know, when the market was just kind of lulling you to sleep. If you set your alerts like we do, we mentioned um, levels to watch pre-market. So we did get a nice break of value uh, in on the on the one hour chart as well. We also got a break of value on the five minute chart in Apple. Uh, Facebook, even though we saw a little bit of call buying, was kind of a, a snoozer today. Um, I thought that might be look interesting in the morning. Right in the beginning of the day, we saw some calls being bought. Uh, but you can see here was the break today in Apple above value. Again, first attempt uh, kind of sat back inside value and then it went with uh, a nice green bar here. And uh, that was Apple. Um, I'm st I did not trade Apple today, so I confess I confess that was not I did not do it. Um, I'm still in Amazon and just loving what's been going on with Amazon. I kind of hedged it a little bit today. Um, this has been I mean looking at the daily chart, just a clear breakout. This is what I was looking for for a while in Amazon. Um, we caught this right on the day that it broke out, and I've been sticking with it. So um, just staying with the trend here. And, um, you know, considering that it moved sideways for a long time, I thought that this could basically happen. And, um, you know, I would say kind of a home run uh, <laughs> in, in Amazon. I have calls. I've got a couple different call spreads on. So that uh, worked out really well. Um, a couple other names that... Um, Moved really nicely today. eBay, uh, this is the second day. Yesterday, we saw weekly calls in eBay, and today we saw a little bit further out. If you go to my recap for the day, uh, there was some May 34s that went up. Um, also, I would say, you know, for, if you're looking for an overall theme for option activity, a lot of call buying in consumer staples. Sometimes we, we've seen this before where it's just like basically one day, somebody just goes through and just hits them all. Maybe they know something about one particular name, who knows. Um, so KHC, uh, this was a lot of volume in terms of contracts, but if you look at the price, it was only about like 10 cents, 13 cents. Um, CLX also saw Uh, some call buying. Uh, they came in for the April 140s. Pretty short dated stuff in uh, in Clorox. Um, this is a name that's kind of been downtrending a little bit, but you see the a hammer bar, so maybe that's a short term bottom in for Clorox. Kellogg, which we've seen uh, some call buying here and there, just about a thousand of those. Uh, those did go up aggressively though in um, in Kellogg. And then in the beginning of the day, we saw uh, some some. Uh, I keep I, I'm almost getting these names wrong between Clorox and Colgate. 
but we saw some cold cold gate. Keep in mind the that um, it's August, it's long term, but also keep in mind the strike. Somebody's really looking for a big move. This is almost be you know I, I was commentating about this earlier today. Considering that the price is 73 in Colgate. Uh, they're they're looking at the 85 strike. You know that's about 15% above. That's a big move for a consumer staple. That's almost um, is pricing in in a either a huge move for earnings or b a, a takeout. So just bear that in mind because um, Colgate isn't really going to move or nor I shouldn't say it isn't, but it normally doesn't move that much. So um, I you know I've seen this activity before when they really reach really far out of the money. Who knows? Maybe in those four or five consumer consumer names, one of them gets gets has something going on with them. But um, anyway, that's I would say is the uh, one of the themes for today. Uh, what else? Um, well, I have CL up there. Might as well look at crude. Nice day in crude, um, as well as in nat gas. Uh, so a nice move up here. It closed on the highs at 1.7%, and actually moved outside of the new value area for April. Uh, we do have oil inventories tomorrow. The API numbers actually showed, uh, I believe, a build of about, um, I have it in here. Sorry, I'm not uh, precise. Um, the uh, API supplies fell 1.8 billion barrels for the week. That was what they reported. The Department of Energy number is tomorrow. So um, that was this uh, this big candle where we try to break out. Notice we've got, obviously, that's a little bit of resistance because we didn't want to take it out even though that number was, um, I would view as positive. Um, Nat gas, uh, really nice day, up 5%. And you kind of look at this chart and another, so both both oil and Nat gas, which sometimes move in opposite directions, both were up today and kind of closed on their highs today. So uh, you have to love that if you trade energy, I guess. Uh, CHK, um, take a look at this name. Chesapeake had a real big day today, up 6%. Take a look at that. Um, a close on nice volume on the 200-day moving average. So, you know, if you're looking to trade something in cash, uh, this is a name that I won't be trading in options, but more in cash because it's just a $6 stock. Um, you know, if you want to use the 200-day moving average as a stop, you're basically, you get a nice close above it. And uh, we'll see what that name does tomorrow. Uh, so I did not put on a position in this one, but I, I'll, I'll be looking to do that. Um, I've got a cash portfolio, a trend cash portfolio that um, that all of Tribeca Trade Group subscribers get to see. That's now up just this month, uh, or just actually in the last couple of weeks, it's up 2.2% uh, since, since I kicked that off. So we've got a little bit of nice performance um, considering if you want to benchmark it, I guess, to the S&P, it's, it's up nicely. Um, other names, um, continuation in number liquidators. This is another name, speaking of uh, holding in cash. Um, real nice move. Uh, again, moving outside of that 200-day um, that moving average. Love it. Love the base, and I love the move here. And, um, you know, I won't be surprised if it comes in a little bit from here. It looks pretty extended on the RSI. What is it? Uh, an 85. But I like the breakout here. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, what else did we see today? Some more finish line for two, for the second day in a row. Um, this is a horrible, horrible looking chart, but um, I played it for a day trade today and, and made a little bit of money on it because uh, you know names for me. My system is if it's underneath the 200-day moving average, it's, if it if it's in a downtrend, I really don't want to. Um, hold it for more than just a, a pop. You know, if it's going to, if there's going to be momentum in it for the day, fine, I'll participate in it, but I'm not holding that thing overnight. No way, <laughs> no way, no shape. Um, what else we got here? Oh, there was, there was all, several names in retail that saw some call buying, maybe some people thinking that it's a little bit oversold. We saw some JC Penny calls. We saw some gap calls. Uh, I think there was a couple other names. Staples, which was in the beginning of the day, which was rumors to have a buyout. I, I liked on Bloomberg, there was an article saying, um, and I forget who put it out, so I apologize, but they were saying, who would buy, who wants to buy Staples now, considering uh, Amazon is just kicking their butt. Um, what else? Uh, we talked about eBay. Um, LYV, two days in a row for this name. Uh, this is an, an entertainment company, Live Nation, also breaking out. That looks like a 52-week high to me, uh, 3097 in this one. So again, two days. Um, and again, uh, this one's just fully breaking out in LYV. Uh, we talked about the consumer staples name. Uh, CF actually got into a little bit of, it was funny, a little bit of a Twitter battle. Um, not battle, but people were... 
a couple different opinions people had on on CF Industries. I like it. It's my initials, so it's great initials. But um, sorry, I'm just joking around. There's a block of 5,000 calls that went up. Notice it's right sitting on the 200-day moving average. Maybe it bounces from here. Um, just a qu quick observation on that, that maybe somebody's dip buying there on the 200-day moving average. Notice this name popped really nice um, and then came back in. So it's not oversold anymore, but um, it's you know starting to make, um, I would say, a, a higher low on the RSI. Um, so a little bit of divergence there, I would uh, I would say. Um, uh, big put order today in Cree. Uh, a couple of subscribers hit this really nicely today. I mean, just really got smoked um, and a hit below the 200-day moving average, down 7%, closed almost off the lows, just a little bit off the, off the lows in this one. And um, this was, I believe it was AYI who had earnings that were bad. And, and I guess they have a close, very, um, in similar business business lines, uh, Cree is to, to that company. So that was right in the beginning of the day. Um, that was when I looked at, but I, I did not take in, in Cree, but nice break of the 200-day moving average. Obviously, you can't trade every name, but a couple subscribers hit it really nicely today. Then Tesoro, really weird, because we saw a, a put buyer in this one earlier in the day and then call buyers came in so i i think this chart looks weak to me um it's below the 200 day moving average but i wasn't going to touch it after um i actually was in the puts and i dumped them uh for just about a scratch because i saw some aggressive calls that came in so um even though it looks like it's weak to me um below the 200 day moving average i don't need to be in that name um, YPF, this is a name that we saw some calls in last week, also saw some calls in this week. Really nice move in this name, up four point, uh, up four percent. So um, I took a couple profit targets in this one today. I put this trade on today, S still holding a small, maybe about a quarter of my position um, on some aggressive call buying. Uh, what else? A couple of names that weren't that aren't on here, but Tesla um, also still kind of. Um, I also hedged a little bit of Tesla today. You know, real nice breakout that's ta taking place. Pretty much closed, um, very close to the highs. Up seven. Uh, sorry, not seven percent. Up uh, up one point seven percent. Excuse me. That would be a really nice day. But uh, you could see this is this is clearing. Uh, resistance here and moving nice. So you know, going back to the to the beginning of the video talking about how the equities weren't moving very much. As you can see, I went through about uh, probably a little bit over five names that really uh, punched out really nicely here. So, you know, the best thing um, that I, I, I do, um, one of the best things that I do in the morning is, is put um, alerts where, you know, right around the value areas, right around breakout levels, breakdown levels as well, just in case we did, the market does sell off. And um, you can catch these things. You know, obviously that's um, the, one of the hardest things as a trader is that you only have one set of eyes. But if you can kind of program some things and automate some of your trading, um, you can you can catch some of these moves, catch some of these names that are breaking out. And also keep keeping a healthy watch list as well. Uh, that's uh, that's something that we do as well. So um, thanks for watching tonight's video and have a have a great night. I'll see you back Wednesday morning. Thanks.